Yo, yo, welcome back to the show. Hope everybody is good out there today. Continuing down the path of rookie trends. We're talking wide receivers. And this wide receiver class was absolutely loaded once again. The league and NFL has got to be, you know, smiling from ear to ear, knowing the fact that we got a ton of great talent at the rookie spot for wide receivers. Trends are important to see what these guys did in the preseason. Draft season is underway. Did the running backs earlier. So if you missed that show, go check that one out. But let's start off with Jordan Addison. He is on the ups. He was my top rated wide receiver coming out of this draft class and he is proving it the entire off season and training camp and preseason just absolutely phenomenal his separation is going to be the best out of this class and i'm still sticking to that his hands are like glue his route tree is phenomenal this guy is just a playmaker and i mean playing with jj he's gonna see lesser coverage all day long i fully expect and jordan addison to have a phenomenal rookie season next one is jackson smith no juke ball and i mean okay He's on the ups and the downs for me right now simply because of that wrist injury. You know, he's back at practice, which is a good thing. That's why I didn't want to give him the full down marker at this point. But, I mean, I didn't even see him get hurt. I saw that catch he made live, and then he fell down, and then it was a wrist surgery. I was like, what the heck? I didn't even see it happen. Tough kid, though, man. He came back. He's already practicing in camp. I think he's going to be ready to go. Looks like he's wearing that sleeve on the wrist. So we'll see. Week one usage. We might have to wait and pause maybe the first three weeks before we see the unleashing of Jackson Smith no jig ball but he's on the ups and the downs another supreme talent very close to how I rank Jordan Addison Quentin Johnston he's on the even kill for me again you know he played well I'm not gonna you know say he suggest he did not I'm still upset with the body catching and it's it's something about his game I saw it at TCU and it's it's one of these things that I think he can overcome and I think it's gonna you know not maybe inhibit his play but it's one of those things I want to see the natural hand catchers he can do it but I mean he's very comfortable when he uh corrals the ball into his body rather than using his hands that's why I got him on the on the even right now he didn't disappoint me because he did make plays I just wanted to see that ironed out of his game didn't see it enough to give him the ups on this one Zay Flowers this guy is a magician to the electrician I mean he's what a season we could potentially see from a Lamar Jackson and these Baltimore Ravens. Zay looks good when we're talking about route tree and elusive ability like Jordan Addison. Zay Flowers is right on his tail. He is probably the most elusive wide receiver in this draft class. He will show it with the Ravens. He is definitely on the ups for me. Another one. These I'm telling you, all this wide receiver class was beautiful, man. Jalen Hyatt. He's been cooking. He's changed his number, by the way, after I did my graphics. Thanks a lot, man. Making me look like Bush League. He's 84. He's now 13. But, I mean, Jalen Hyatt definitely on the ups. He is going to be utilized as that deep threat in this offense. Truly, is there a number one wide receiver on the New York Giants right now that we can say? I, I really highly doubt it. So that job is open for opportunity. Hyatt could definitely make noise this season. I, I, I want to say maybe Darren Waller is going to be the number one target here in uh, New York this year. We'll see how that goes. But Hyatt definitely on the ups. He was absolutely burning and cooking defensive backs and safeties and made a lot of big plays. Josh Downs, my guy, been promoting this guy so much. He's on the even. He was almost on the down. I could almost say even to down for a Josh Downs, no pun intended, because, I mean, he was not as good as I was hoping he was going to be. The transition for some of these collegiate athletes into the pros does take a little bit of time. I'm still not, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, it's not like I'm saying I'm not sold on his skill set because I absolutely am. He had a couple drops I didn't like. Didn't see that in college near as much as I saw in this camp and preseason, but I do think he'll iron that out as they build chemistry. The Colts right now are an absolute crapshoot with the JT situation. Josh Downs on the even two downtrend for me right now, but I fully expect him to bounce back very quickly next is Rasheed Rice he's on the ups and the downs for me and you're all gonna be like what he led everybody in preseason yardage basically and I get it he had a good preseason it's the dropping problem and the lack of separation that I'm gonna continue to harp on with a Rasheed Rice Okay, we had uh, Justin Ross. He made waves as well. So who's going to win the starting job? Who's going to be that guy that's going to steal targets in this in this offense from Patrick Mahomes? Could it be Rasheed Rice? Absolutely. He made some phenomenal grabs. He looked good in preseason. But once you're up against the ones, I'm still putting my money on a Justin Ross over Rasheed Rice. But Rice did look good enough to get the up and the down. 
We'll see. I think he had four drops this preseason. Don't really like that. But, I mean, he still is a very talented wide receiver. Cedric Tillman, he's on the even. And, I mean, okay, I could have put him on the down as well. I don't want to be overly critical on it because it is preseason. But he is good, and he will find his role eventually in this offense. However, I do believe Donovan Peoples-Jones still did win out that job. So, Cedric Tillman likely going to have to wait on that bench on the sideline just a little bit. He needs an injury to get his uh, you know foot on the field and then showcase his talents that much more with Deshaun Watson and these Cleveland Brownies so for me he's on the even didn't disappoint didn't make me say you know wow he's unbelievable at this point Marvin Mims he's on the ups right now only because of the Jerry Judy injury if Judy does come back earlier than we think then I think this one's on the even as well Mims did enough he was dealing with some issues himself on the medicals but he if, if I'm telling y'all if Jerry Judy's out Mims is gonna be huge get in this offense but we'll see the you know what the word is going to be over this next week for Jerry Judy. Is it going to be just a week or two or is it going to prolong to, you know, I've heard even maybe potentially up to eight weeks if it is really bad on the hamstring. So Marvin Mims right now, definitely one of these guys, not only in Dynasty, but he could be a very good, reliable, you know, uh, uh, redraft player at this point. Tank Dell to uh, Houston Texans. Man, oh man, am I on the C.J. Stroud bandwagon. If you guys watched all my scouting reports and you watched how I was talking about Stroud and Young, I was all Team Stroud, baby, and he is showcasing it. This team is going to be very good in the next couple years. I'm a believer in C.J. Stroud. I think he's going to be able to utilize all the wide receivers in this offense, and Tank Dell is going to be that favorite target of him because of the yak ability. Just like a Zay Flowers, Tank Dell can make people miss in a phone booth, and I mean, he's, he could shake and juke anybody out of their pants. No kidding. Keyshawn Butte. I'm being very warm for Butte right now, even though, okay, you know, going back to his collegiate days, I was a huge supporter at LSU. He's dropped off. I don't know what it is. It's the medicals, the lack of effort. But, I mean, the last contest, we did see what he is capable of in that last preseason game. So that's why he got up to my, uh, you know, even kill. Made the 53-man roster. We will see what Butte can potentially be. I do believe he could be eventually like another Jarvis Landry in this league. Butte still is a fan favorite. Maybe I'm a little biased on this one. That's why I got him in the even. We could actually have him on the down as well as an even kill right now. Jaden Reed, he's on the ups, and I do believe, you know, <clears throat> with the youth movement they have with the Green Bay Packers, Reed has done enough to earn that slot position. This is going to be a massively young wide receiver core, so let's see what these young men can do. I do believe, you know, with the open ability that he can make uh, for the slot, he could become a favorite of a Jordan Love, and Reed is definitely flying up my boards. Dynasty more than redraft this year. We got to see how it shakes out. The first four weeks, he could be a waiver wire priority. No kidding for these Green Bay Packers. It's all on love. We'll see what love can definitely do. Tyler Scott, next one on my board, the Chicago Bears. He's on the ups for me. I truly like his game a lot, except there's not going to be a lot of opportunity for him. He'll likely start his rookie season on the, pra or, uh, on the special teams, excuse me. So he's definitely a dynasty stash for me, but he is definitely rising. I think that he could eventually find himself a way to be a standard fixture in this offense with a Justin Fields. I really like his game a lot. He has come a long way. Xavier Hutchinson's on the down. And it sucks because I really like Xavier Hutchinson. I'm a big fan of what these Texans are building. Hutchinson, to me, just didn't showcase near enough. I just don't think it was enough opportunity for the man. He could be something of a lesser Mike Evans type of role with these Houston Texans eventually once, you know, all the other guys like a Robert Woods, Bobby Trees, they're off the roster and such. And we could see a Hutchinson, you know, uh, Nico Collins, Mechie, Tank Dell, Foursome on this Houston Texans team. It's a good, youthful squad as well. Right now, he's on the down simply because it just wasn't used. He wasn't utilized near enough this preseason, but I still like the skill set. Jonathan Mingo's on the even to down as well for me. You know, he flashed a little bit, but this Bryce Young offense, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. I'm more, you know, supportive of what potentially C.J. Stroud could do this year over what Bryce Young and these Carolina Panthers might do. So we'll see. Pick your poison. But I do believe year one, he's going to lean on the vets. Bryce Young will over somebody like a Jonathan Mingo. So it's a pause, wait and see. Still boatloads of talent for this man as well. These next three gentlemen impressed me huge this preseason. Ronnie Bell, Jake Bobo, and Puka Nachua, man. These guys absolutely 
absolutely uplifted their game. Ronnie Bell looked phenomenal with these 49ers. Jake Bobo surprised me. I will not lie. I did not think he was going to be this good. He looked special good in uh, Seattle with these Seahawks. Cracked the 53-man roster, and he is definitely potentially going to make some noise in four wideout sets. We will see how Seattle does decide to utilize him, but he looked so good that you know that they had to keep him on this roster. Puka Nachua, I'm only saying it because he looks like a lesser Cooper Cup out there. I mean, he's not... He's, Nobody's going to be another Cooper Cup at this point for these Rams, but he does look good. Hands look very good. Route tree looks nice, and I think that it's going to eventually, you know, pay off for him. Where Ronnie Bell, he's got some, you know, people to beat out, but he looked so good. You know that Kyle Shannon likes his services that could potentially come from the slot. Next we got is Andre Yosevash. Like I said, the Terminator name, he should be in a Terminator movie. I like Andre Yosevash. I think he's a very good talent. And with the Cincinnati Bengals and Joey B, we could potentially see, you know, a little bit of changing of the guard. If the Bengals decide to move on from, you know, maybe a T. Higgins, maybe a Tyler Boyd, we could see Yosevash's role increase in this offense. He looked very good this preseason, and he will be a name that you guys need to keep your eye on. Maybe not for this year as well, but he is definitely one that definitely rose up my board this offseason. Parker Washington on the down. It's a tough one for Parker because there's so many mouths to feed in Jacksonville that he, again, it's like a Hutchinson, just didn't get enough opportunity because there are so many mouths to feed. And I do like the Jaguars and what they're building as well. Their offense looks ready to go with a Calvin Ridley. I just think that, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a difficult touch for Washington to find his way on the playing field. That's why I got him on the down. Austin Watkins and Jason Brownlee, two undrafted rookie free agents, definitely on the ups. These guys made a name for themselves this preseason where Brownlee made the 53. Austin Watkins got released and subsequently put on the Browns practice squad. So at least he's still on the team. Watkins looked so good in this preseason. I do believe he led everybody in uh, you know, receiving yards this, this preseason. Just wasn't near enough for them to keep him on the roster because they got a lot of talent at the wide receiver position where Brownlee has a very good opportunity with a Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, etc. on this offense. No more Corey Davis. There is potential for Brownlee to at least carve out some snaps in this regular season with an Aaron Rodgers. There's an opportunity for him. He played damn well, and it's a, one of those feel-good stories you like to see, man. Brownlee to the Jets. He looked good. He's on the ups, as is Antoine Green, US, UNC product, my guy. He was one of my sleepers going pre-draft that I was saying could be a very good player, secondary supportive wide receiver on any club this last preseason contest. He showed what he is capable of. Little bias for me as well because I was supportive early on, but I think Green is a very good talent. Will he ever be an alpha number one wide receiver? Probably not. He's going to be your wide receiver two, three. You know, wide receiver two supportive role is probably his ceiling where he's likely a wide receiver three in any offense and could produce for you. Does he got a lot of fantasy impact? We'll see, man. Maybe injuries could get him on the field, but I do like his game enough to put him on the rise. Last one, Trey Palmer. He's on the ups and the downs. I mean, it was an even up and down battle for him through this training camp in preseason. The last contest, he made a spectacular catch. Turned my eye definitely to say, okay, okay, I see ya. You're looking good on that field. So I got him on the ups and the downs. Could say it's an even, but I think he just had, you know, really good spurts of ups and really some really bad downs. So that's kind of where I'm going with the ups and the downs rather than the even. But there is a lot of talent, like I said, at this wide receiver core that we saw from this uh, uh, past NFL draft. And I mean, I mean, fantasy football is coming with injuries do happen you got to understand these rookies could have potential you know opportunity this year to give us viable fantasy productivity but nevertheless as always don't forget to hit that like button hit that subscribe button jump in those comments what do y'all think about this wide receiver core you up on any of them you down on some of them you drafting any of them throw them in the comments we can definitely talk it out but we'll see you next time i am out